Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this morning mountain weather update. All right, it is a powder day across Colorado. I was out this morning up on top of the Continental Divide here, about six to 12 inches of a new snow, and there's still a little bit more yet to fall across Colorado. Let me take you further west. This is Aspen. Look at that cam this morning, about nine, 10, 11 inches of uh, total snow so far, and you'll continue to add to that. Storms not done. This is uh, all part of that Panhandle hook storm system. Let me take you into Utah. Things really starting to wind down here across the Wasatch, but 11, 12 inches in the last 24 hours at Alta. Um, you can see just some light snow coming down there. All right, let me go to radar. Okay, so this is Colorado, and you can really see the rotation around this Panhandle hooker storm system. This is exactly what I was describing the last couple of days, how that wind comes around on the north side, enhances those upslope winds, those easterly upslope winds across Denver, the foothills, and the Continental Divide, lifting that air up. It's been mainly rain in Denver below 6,000 feet. It'll probably change over to a mix and then all snow before this thing comes to an end with some light accumulations, but heavier accumulations, of course, as you go above 6,000 feet. And so this storm system not done yet. It'll, it'll still be spinning the rest of today into tonight and then a much drier day across Colorado on Sunday, tomorrow, 2-4. A little wider view. So snow continues today and tomorrow, Idaho, Montana, and also Wyoming. But tomorrow will be a dry day for the Wasatch. Tomorrow should be totally dry, just waiting on the next storm system to come in. All right, let me just show you what I'm thinking here this morning. Latest uh, bullet points and trends. So storm number one continues through 2-4 in Wyoming, Montana, Idaho. The Panhandle hooker storm system in Colorado will continue for the rest of today and then much drier across the state of Colorado tomorrow. Utah, like I said, turning dry until the next storm system, which is afternoon, evening of 2-5, all the way through 2-9. There's actually potentially two storm systems in there, and that's going to be a significant snowfall during that period. So storm number two <clears throat> will hit California 2-4 to 2-5, and this is going to be a powerhouse. It's going to have a moderate to strong intensity atmospheric river surge with it, and then that's, that storm will then break loose and move into the interior, and that's how we're going to get that big snow through a lot of the interior Rockies. Storm number three has changed its trajectory. 2-9 through 2-11. It looked like it was going to be tracking across the northern tier yesterday. Now it has moved to the south, and it may come in more central and move across the central Rockies. So I'll show you what that looks like coming up. But overall, the big grand totals are still there. California, Utah, Wyoming, and Colorado. All right, let me just show you what... Um, what this is going to look like or what it looks like right now on water vapor satellite imagery. So on this, your oranges and reds are your drier air aloft. Your moisture aloft is whites, blues, and greens. So a couple of different pieces. Here's your panhandle hook storm setting up right where we thought it would, wrapping all of that moisture and that wind back across uh, parts of Colorado, enhancing the snowfall. Here comes the next storm system. It's kind of a merger. There's a little bit of energy there, a little bit of energy there. So these two lows are going to um, effectively merger and just absolutely nail California, especially South Central California. Could be six months worth of rain out of this thing in Los Angeles, and that's going to be feet of snow for the high Sierra. And then behind it, you've got a couple of different storm systems just kind of waiting in the wings back here. So it's a busy pattern. In fact, let me just show you what the forecast, look at atmospheric river uh, potential here. And this is forecast integrated vapor transport for that south central coastline of California, specifically 35 north, 120 and a half west. And you can see with this next storm system, 2425, it brings in a moderate to strong intensity atmospheric river surge. There's a lot of confidence in that and just very heavy precip. All right, here's how it plays out. Here's the forecast radar and satellite. That's the setup by this afternoon at about 5.30. You can see the precip continues in Colorado, probably shifting over to rain, snow, and then snow before coming to an end across the front range. But it should be all snow above 6,000. Look at that band or belt of snow on the north, northwest side of the storm. Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, that continues all the way into 2-4. All right, let me move this into the future. There we are, 2-4. Here's 2-4 in the afternoon. Here comes the next storm system out of California. Begins to make its move into the interior. Here's 2-7 in the morning. So snow in the Tetons, Montana, the Wasatch, and now uh, Colorado. 2-7 in the afternoon, same thing, and 2-8. Here comes another storm system. So this is 2-9. So it's much more of a central track coming through California, lays down another shot of heavy snow for the Sierra, and you can see the feet of moisture already heading towards the Wasatch, Tetons, and parts of Colorado, especially western and southwest Colorado. So that's 2-9 in the morning. Here's 2-9 in the afternoon. There's 2-10. 
uh, 2.10 in the afternoon, and by 2.11 it's moving away, and we're kind of left with a little bit of a west-northwest flow. So there's 2.12, and the potential next storm system would be way up in the Pacific Northwest. All right, let's talk about the jet stream pattern here. So this is 2.7. This is the storm pulling out of California, moving into Utah, Wyoming, Colorado, New Mexico, 2.7, 2.6, 2.7, 2.8. Um, jet stream moving further down the road. This is 210, and you can see the trough swinging through Utah, Wyoming, Colorado, New Mexico. That's that storm three, which has shifted its track. That'll be moving through 29, 210, 211. Now here is 212, and this very last piece of that trough kind of sliding and moving out of uh, Colorado and New Mexico. And then behind it, you can kind of see what's left of the jet steering a potential next storm into the Pacific Northwest. All right, as far as snowfall, rest of today, tonight, and tomorrow, another one to three inches in the Wasatch, and that's probably going to do it. Much drier tomorrow. Another five to eight for the Tetons, another five, six inches up in the Big Sky, Bridger Bowl, Discovery. Um, in Colorado, maybe another two to six inches across the western slope, but a lot of the additional accumulation uh, will be right on top of the Continental Divide. Loveland and Keystone, A Basin, Summit County, Breck, uh, Winter Park, Eldora, Cameron Pass, where that uh, that flow around that Panhandle hook storm will benefit most of that Continental Divide the most. So we're not quite done there. And then potentially that next storm hits California 2425, so you can already see we're looking at one to two feet with that sucker coming in. All right, next phase. So this is a big one. This is 2.5 through 2.9. Um, an additional 2 to 3 feet across the Sierra. So we could be looking at 4 or 5 feet of snow here yet to go in the Sierra through 2.9. Um, that's a huge bullseye. And potentially 3 feet on the way between 2.5 and 2.9 in Little Cottonwood Canyon, 2 feet up in Park City, Snow Basin, and Deer Valley. In Colorado, it's mainly western slope and southwest Colorado that benefits during this time period. Uh, you can see much, much less snow on the Continental Divide once we get rid of the Panhandle hook storm. A couple of feet for the Tetons. Uh, up in uh, B.C. during this time period, we're looking at about mm, 3 to 8 inches. Let me back up and look at the first period. 2, 3 to 2, 4, potentially 3, 4, 5 inches maybe a little bit less in Revelstoke, and then, of course, we add to it here, 2.5 through 2.9. But let me show you the final time period, 2.10 through 2.12. With the shifting storm track, that brings a lot more snow into the Wasatch and also into parts of Colorado and northern New Mexico. You can see the potential there, another 4 to 8 inches, a lot of places, 2.10 through 2.12. Um, looking at about 3 to 6 across the Tetons and less as you go into Montana, Idaho. Maybe another 1 to 3 up there in parts of uh, interior B.C. All right, one last stop. No, actually, you know what? I want to look at a grand total map. This is 2-3 through 2-12, central and northern mountains of Colorado. So that's that takes into account um, the remainder of Storm 1, 2, and 3. And you can see the potential here for 1 to 2 feet of uh, grand total snow. Let's go a little further west. And again, grand total snow by 2-12, you're looking at 1 to 2 feet for most places, maybe even a little bit more um, in those aspects around Crested Butte conundrum, the maroon bells, and Capitol Peak. Pretty impressive accumulation there. Let's go to the northeast. All right, grand total snow, uh, rest of today through 212. Most of this accumulation comes very late in the period, 211 or 212. So most of the period is devoid of any big snowfall. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this morning mountain weather update. Uh, stay safe out there and have a great weekend.